Did you see the X on the map that Debbie was focusing in on? Today's lesson in Bible Treasure Hunt is all about X marks the spot. You know, you see these movies where they're looking for treasure and they have to take so many steps this way and so many, you know, go, go all these places and then all of a sudden they find an X and they start digging with their shovel and they find the treasure. Welcome back to Bible Treasure Hunt. It's Wednesday. Now, this lesson, you probably are going to be viewing on Friday. It's a little bit late this week, but, um, you know, sometimes things happen in life that we just can't avoid, and we have to deal with them, and, and it just kind of puts a monkey wrench in, in our week. But, but you know what? We're so glad to be here, and I'm so glad that you tuned in. So, so welcome. All right, so X marks the spot. We're going to talk today about where our treasure is at, the spot, the spot. That's what we're talking about. X marks the spot, okay? So I'm going to dry, dive right into the scripture today. All right, so the, the scripture comes from Matthew 13, verses 44 through 46. Kind of a short scripture today. And here's what it says. It says, God's kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field. Have you ever buried a time capsule? Have you ever found something that you really, really liked and you didn't want anybody to find it, so you buried it in the backyard, on a beach, you know, somewhere, okay? So God's kingdom, heaven, is like a treasure that's hidden in a field. One day, a man found the treasure. He hid it again and he was so happy that he went and he sold everything he had to buy the field where that treasure was hidden, okay? Now, this is, um, the, this scripture is kind of symbolic about how we're to view heaven, okay? We want God wants us to want to be with him so much that we would be willing to sell everything we have in order to have heaven because our treasure's not here on earth. And we've been talking about that from week to week to week now about how our treasure is not here on earth. It's in heaven. It's God's kingdom. And he wants to give us that treasure. But we have to put him first and we have to want him more than anything else. So that's what our scripture is talking about. So he sold everything that he had. Also, it says God's kingdom is like a merchant looking for pearls. Okay, he finds pearls. And one day he found a very fine pearl and he went and sold everything that he had to buy it. There again, another symbolic scripture about how important God's kingdom is. It's, it's more precious than, than pearls or diamonds or rubies or sapphires or any kind of precious gem. God's kingdom, heaven, our eternal life with him in heaven needs to be more important than anything that we could ever have on this earth or ever hold in our hand because treasure is so very important. Okay, now I want, since we're talking about gems and you know pearls and rubies and diamonds and all of that um have you ever seen a lady that has an engagement ring this is not an engagement ring um but they are a symbol of love okay and of a commitment and don't we need to be committed when we're trying to get to heaven when we're trying to get that treasure that we've been talking about all this time, we need to, uh, we need to treasure that. We need to, God made us so that we could love him because he loved us so much. And if we want to get to heaven, then we need to be committed. And when a girl gets proposed to and she gets her engagement ring, she rarely takes it off because it's so valuable to her. And the, the guy that gives her the ring, sometimes he has saved up money for a very, very long time in order to purchase this most beautiful thing that he wants to show her how much that he loves her and ask her to be with him.
forever, okay? God wants us to be with him forever in eternity in heaven. And so he sent us his most precious thing. He sent us Jesus to die on the cross for us, to forgive us of all of our sins so that we could live for him. And then when he sends Jesus back to get us or when we die, when we leave this life, we can be with him in heaven. And that's what this lesson today, it isn't very long, but that's what it's all about. It's about knowing that our treasure is not here. It's in heaven. It's, it's with God. It's in it's been an eternity worshiping the king, and I can't wait for that day, and I'm so excited about that. Now, a friend of mine, Stacy, is going to share her story about how she became engaged, and then I'm going to come back. We're going to talk about our treasure chest and close with prayer. Hi there. I am Stacy Schaefer, and my husband's name is Kevin Schaefer. So I am originally from Nebraska, but we both went to college in um, Kansas City area in Kansas um, at Mid-America Nazarene University. And we didn't know each other at school, but we ended up um, having mutual friends and many years after college we were dating. And I was teaching in Kansas and he was living in Indiana. He was farming. And... Um, so we had dated for quite a while, and then um, we kind of talked about marriage, but I had no idea that anything was happening in terms of a proposal or engagement. And um, so I was teaching one day, I think it was a Friday, and I went, um, I had to go to my principal's office, not because I was in trouble, but because she wanted to do an evaluation for me. So during my kids' special class, they had Spanish that day, I went into her office and we had an evaluation to talk about how I was doing as a teacher and if I had any questions and if um, I needed anything from her. And she was even kind of asking me some questions about Kevin and saying, so do you really like this guy? Do you think you could maybe get married? What do you think? So I walked out of her room and I was heading to my classroom and I walked into my room and my students were giggling and they were giggling so hard. And so they were second grade. So they're about seven and eight years old. They were just giggling and giggling. And, and to be honest with you, they normally didn't like Spanish. They didn't, they didn't understand it very well and it was hard for them. And so it was one of those things that they just, they struggled with. So I was wondering, why are you giggling after Spanish? So I walked to the front of the room and I thanked the Spanish teacher for coming. And I started a, a new lesson and all of a sudden in walks Mr. Kevin into my room with a, beautiful black suit and tie and he had a huge vase of red roses and then all of these other women start coming behind him all of the teachers that I had taught with the principal was there some of the aides were there and they were just standing behind him and he came up to me and he got down on one knee and he asked me to marry him and I was shocked I was so stunned. I didn't even really know what was going on. I kept saying, what are you doing here? Because he wasn't supposed to be there. He was, we weren't going to get see each other until spring break the next week. And he told me later on that I never even told him yes. You know, that I gave him a big hug and he put the ring on my finger, but I had never even said yes. Um, so then after he put the ring on my finger, which here is my ring, Miss Cindy wanted you to see it. Um, I was just so excited, but I was, I was just shunned, stunned. I didn't know what was going on. And so then one at a time, my students came up to me and they each handed me a heart that they had cut out themselves and they had decorated. So while I was in the principal's office with my principal, Kevin had been in my classroom with my kids during Spanish class and he had told them who he was and he had told them that um, he was going to propose to me that day and he said, I really want you as her students to be a part of this. And so he said, do you think that right now during Spanish class, 
class that you could cut out some hearts and put some special notes on these hearts for, for Miss Miller. That was my name at the time. And then he told him what was going to happen. And then after I propose, you'll come up one at a time in classroom order and give her your heart. And you can give her a hug. You can do whatever you want. And so that's what we did. Every single student came up to me and they gave me their heart and they gave me huge hugs. And some of them gave Mr. Kevin a high five. And then we took a whole huge class picture when we were done. Um, and then after that, I just, I was just kind of, what's going on? I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what, what to do. My, my fiance of that time was right there and my students were right there and we had to finish the end of the day and my principal came up to me and she said, you've just had a lot of excitement. I think it's time that you and Kevin get to go. Why don't you just go and enjoy and celebrate and I'll take care of your class for the rest of the day. So that's kind of our story. It's a fun one. My husband um, did a phenomenal job. He really thought about me and he thought about how important my students were to me and he included them in that. So that's kind of our story. So if you see Mr. Kevin sometime around church, give him a high five because he did a good job. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, Stacy, for that beautiful story. And we are back now and we're going to go to our treasure chest. And I have brought something from home, something I treasure to share with you. And I've enjoyed doing that all these weeks. This funny little ball right here. This was made by my oldest, who is now 45 years old. And I did not give birth to him. He was four years old whenever I met his dad. And he made this a school the same year that his dad and I got married. And he gave this to me and it has his initials in the bottom of it. And I keep some rocks in it that I gathered at the Grand Canyon in my house. Um, but I left all the rocks at home. But I wanted to show you this. It's not beautiful like a jewelry or a diamond or even a ring. But you know what? I treasure this because he made this for me and he gave it to me. So it's going to go in our treasure box. Are you remembering all the things that we put in there? Because next week's the last week and we'll review all the stuff that's in our treasure box so that you can remember all the stories that went with them. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to prayer and then we're going to close out for this week. All right. Heavenly Father, we're so glad that you sent a most beautiful treasure in Jesus to us, to die for our sins, to die on a cross so that we could be forgiven, so that someday we can have eternity in God's kingdom with you, that, uh, that we don't need to take anything with us, that our trip there is all paid for by Jesus dying on the cross, and that we don't have to take anything with us. We just get to be with you. And Lord, we're so thankful for that. Be with my friends out there and keep your hands upon them and keep them safe and, and just give them good days and help them to enjoy this nice summer weather. Lord, and bring us back again safely next week. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.